The typical app building process looks something like the sequence of steps here. In this video, for steps two and three on the screen here of prototyping and high fidelity des designs, you're going to see a brand new AI tool that is tackling the tricky business of building UI. To grab your copy of the tool, head over to polymet.ai and just log in and create an account. You'll be greeted with basically a um, few steps to get you going. And what is going on here is that we get uh, 250 credits, 50 credits will give you five pages worth and uh, it's 50 credit per page, but then it's 25 per component and you'll get a few variations on them. So let's just dive right in here so I'm going to select the basic one, but I don't actually want to use this. I actually want to use it more like a template, right? So, and one of the nice things I can see here is that it gives an image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head over. I'm going to mention two sites. There is UI8.net and there is Dribble. And whatever it is that you're creating, so in this case, uh, I'm going for a dashboard, you can just head over here and get some inspiration. Now, let's be honest. We've all seen SASH dashboards before, but let's look at this. this that's That's pretty cool. These are... These are kind of next level in terms of what somebody has uh, designed. So thank you, kind folks. Uh, you are awesome at design. And I'm going to take inspiration from this. And I'm going to upload this into my, um, dash, or my prompt here. And with that image in there now, I've also updated the prompt. And here's some tips on prompts. One thing I want to point out is that Obviously, we're going to tell it the type of app. In this case, we're going to do an AI logo generation SaaS app with an interface similar to the one in the image. Now, this interface, let's look at this. It doesn't make sense for this these graphs and these other uh, progress things to be there. So I want to point out that folks who are especially beginners should note that there's a difference between layout and style. For example, the layouts of these two AI systems are the same, chat, GTP, and Claude. The, two of the most top tier um, tools out there. But the, the layout's very similar, but the style is different. Style is things like colors, fonts, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm pointing out here is that whatever you would include in an image, be sure that you speak to this aspect of, are you talking about, are you giving this as an example of the layout for what uh, the, the layout should be, or are you giving an example for the style? All right, enough preamble. Let's go and fire this off. But I do want to point out that type of thing for garbage in, garbage out when it comes to these AI tools. Um, as much as you can give all of the nice bumpers for anyone that's played bowling before, where you got these things that kind of keep the ball going down the lane. Anyways, let's see what we get. And voila, a pretty good start to some kind of dashboard that would be related to logos. Now, one of the nice things about this tool, we can see, I'm just clicking around, uh, in a couple of these places, it doesn't fill in a screen, but in some other ones, it does. So it's just kind of an amount of uh, tokens or context window that this tool has for you know building out all this. There's a lot that goes into these things, right? But we can see here, this is where the logo generation stuff would happen on the create new one. There is a my projects area, which is pretty darn impressive that we have this here as well. Now, I'm not saying that when you type in something into this tool, you will always get back all this stuff, but they have done some good job on the uh, the tool side, the prompt side, where they are stacking on and layering the, the different uh, UI experiences that are available. Okay, but so let's see how actually useful is this. Well, I think that this project one should probably be where the dashboard is. This dashboard, unless someone is like a freelancer building tons of logos, then this wouldn't make sense in this particular project. So you'd have to think through in your world what is it that you want to have appear on these things? And now, so let's see this process where you can uh, edit this. So let's let's go and let's look at this whole dashboard page. Uh, please swap out the... Okay, so I'm just giving the, it the instruction to do some swapping out. I'm going to see if it can give me this notifications panel as a dropdown and rough in the templates page. Let's see what it gives. So we'll run that revision. The other thing I'll say about this that I haven't said yet is it takes a good minute or two. 
uh, for this to do its thing. It's really going through a lot of information in order to build out one of these layouts. So we'll just let it do its thing. Okay, so we can see it's come back here with those updates. The project stuff is now over here on the main dashboard area. And I'll point out on the top right here, we've actually have the different versions of here kind of kept in uh, as iterations uh, for as this is as this is going on. Now we can see that this is, it's noting that this was the uh, instructions of what happened for the iteration. Um, now I'm going to go back into edit mode. It is a new tool, so if you have any bugs, sometimes you'll just have to refresh the page. And then now I'm now able to get back into the editing. One thing I want to point out that I didn't on the last round was that basically, so you can actually save the set of instructions to individual items. So I'm going to make all of my changes here because what I realized is that the temp, let's take a look at the template page. It kind of doesn't make sense for me to have this. What I think I'll do for this particular example and to wrap up our video is we'll have a my projects, create logo, favorites, downloads, where they can get the final files, and then settings, help, support, and this upgrade CTA. Now, of course, downloads could be available throughout the app, but it'll have its own special section. So I'll say change dashboard. Okay, and so I've got my four edits on here. On the dashboard, I said change it to my projects. On the template, I said to remove it. And then this fourth one here, I said to add a menu item for my, or, uh, sorry, for favorites and then for downloads. And let's see what we get. Some pretty cool updates here. So we have over now on this downloads page, here's where someone could come, see all their logos in a more uh, compact list versus a grid kind of layout. The favorites, obviously, that would just be uh, a UI very similar to this. It didn't put it out on this particular one. And I'll just note on this refresh button, if you ever uh, kind of have something that's not displaying correctly, just hit that. And so really what we were driving here in this entire video is how can we get in your hands as fast as possible, something where you're placed into the driver's seat and you are directing the AI for getting exactly what it is. And I think one thing that makes this tool pretty darn special is the ability to pinpoint something on here. You wanna go beyond just building out the UI and building out the entire sequence of process here. I recommend checking out the 24 hour build a logo SaaS app where we actually built this whole thing using a process where Yes, we went and created our high fidelity designs, but then we built out everything so that we actually have a working tool here where we can enter a business name, get a logo back. And of course, uh, if you're interested in actually building that app, there's a course over on nocodeacademy.co linked in the description for an AI SaaS course where we talk about recipe making and building together your quote unquote recipe, your ingredients of tools that you'll use, how you'll sequence them like in a regular recipe and how you will be able to bake that into a user interface with Stripe as your payment provider and basically get a fully working SaaS app by the end of that course using a process for building your layouts similar to here, but more than that, your database, your step-by-step -step programming instructions, and everything you need to be able to create an entire app. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more tips about building apps in Bubble, and I'll see you in the next one.